The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service works to help landowners protect and improve their natural resources. Sometimes that includes the use of new methods and technologies that can help balance the nutritional needs of cattle with the health of grasslands. Brian Baxter takes us to Kansas to look at a new way to control the movement of cattle and where they graze. The tall grass prairies in central Kansas are home to Mush Rush Ranches, a family operation that raises red Angus bulls and females. With a goal of keeping their ranch viable for generations to come, the Mush Rush family is working with the NRCS Great Plains Grassland Initiative to defend their grasslands from woody plant encroachment. Defending the core, to me, is all about intact grassland. So not only about trees, but having healthy rangeland in our pastures, you know, against any invasive species, against bare ground, really just looking at the health of our pastures and saying, what can be better? And how can we make this better? My hope is that we, we start seeing these defended cores grow in size, that we can actually share the stories of the mush rushes and those individuals that stepped up and said, you know, grasslands are gonna win. And if grasslands win, then the mush rushes win. Wildlife wins, pollinator wins, soil, you know, the, the sequestration, you know, carbon wins, and so there's just a lot of wins on the landscape if we can keep this prairie landscape what it is. One of the unique ways the Mush Rush family is working to fight invasive woody plants and keep their tall grass prairie healthy for both cattle and wildlife is with a research project testing new virtual fencing technology. So we've had the opportunity to join up with the Nature Conservancy, Kansas State University, and some other organizations, including NRCS, on a research project um, involving virtual fence. The major frameworks of this project are to increase habitat for upland game birds, try to repair erosion along waterways. We want to see benefits of grazing along with burning and how maybe there's better ways to rotate through burned areas. And then we also want to change how we utilize areas, um, such as trailing along fences, cornering cattle, push them out of riparian areas to help with erosion, um, hilltops versus side slopes. Maybe we can force them into those areas that they don't graze as intensely and give those other areas a break when they need it. So this is the current version of the collar that we're using. Um, it has a battery compartment with a sound vent on it that puts out a sound impulse to warn the cattle when they're entering an area that they should not be in. And then there's an electrical impulse that comes up through the chain, and that is what deters them further if the sound doesn't. There's a training protocol that we go through and they learn it pretty quickly that the sound means don't go there, and so they quit going in there. And it just hangs around their neck. It does not obstruct grazing. With traditional fencing costing over $10,000 per mile, the virtual technology has the potential to reduce cost and labor. And so far, Cole is impressed with the ease of managing grazing with a collar keeping each cow where he wants them to be. So the collars that we're using utilize AM radio and GPS, and we're able to preload the collars with our grazing parameters. And so the collars can go offline from the tower, but because they have their own GPS chip, they will still work. And through virtual fencing, we're able to focus just on our perimeter fence and then not worry about the interior as much. And we use those collars to actually do the rotations that we have planned. And so using the computer program that they have, we can sit down and we can pre-map our entire grazing plan for the year and lay it out visually with satellite images and so go out, do field notes, you know, mark down areas that we want to stay, out, stay in, stay out of, and then come in, put it in the program, load it up, put it in the collar, and away we go. The project is gaining attention. The Mush Rush family and their cows were on the front page of the Wall Street Journal in a feature article describing their virtual fencing test. And Cole says he's excited to be part of a collaborative project where partners, including NRCS, can pass on their results to others. So with the partnerships, we're utilizing maybe new technology that hasn't been available and maybe people are a little leery of adapting. and so. Because we're doing it through this research project, 
we're kind of sticking our foot in, but not you know diving in completely, just getting an idea of what's going on. And so we can show people in the community like, hey, this is gonna work, or maybe it's not. You know, I think it will. The technology has a lot of potential, and we're really excited to see how it plays out in the next five years and beyond. In the tall grass prairies of Kansas, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you have conservation practices you'd like to put in place on your operation, you should start by visiting with your local NRCS office about the technical and financial assistance they can provide. Go to their website, nrcs.usda.gov, to find an office near you.